So let's say somebody um, listened to this and they say, hey, you know, maybe now is a great time because my races in the next, you know, eight to 12 weeks uh, look like they're not going to happen. What would you uh, encourage maybe like, um, you know, a couple steps for somebody to figure out whether they are, you know, maybe predisposed more, their, their training right now is better for the 5K. How would they figure out um, by maybe doing a set of time trials, whether they need to add in these tempos and stuff, how would they maybe discover that they need to add in sort of this work and stop doing as much of that, um, you know, kind of fast stuff right now? Yeah. Well, if you had a stride power meter, you certainly could, I'm, you know, I'm helping you out there, but I, I totally believe in stride products. I use the power assessment all the time and I profile because it's far more accurate than using GPS. So uh, you can set up time, you know, set up time trials um, to determine how your, what your power profile is, whether you're dropping off significantly. If you don't have a stride power meter, then you got to go on a, a, a measured course and you can't, uh, you can't have something like wind be a factor. Now stride power meters will help you adjust for wind. So even if you're out there doing a 10 mile road time trial, and you happen to have a wind at your back or in your face, or if you're going up a little hill or down a little hill or it varies, it doesn't matter because the power is power and the power will adjust. Even though you're going faster down the hill, right? The power will drop because you're really not producing as much force into the ground, right? And even though you're going slower up the hill or into the wind, the power will adjust and show that you're actually generating more power or force into the ground even though your GPS pace is going down. So if you got the power meter, yeah, you can uh, you can use that uh, in any context, whether it's on a, a measured trail or, or a measured road or wherever. If you don't, then you better be running on something like a track or, or circle loop. You know, you might set up a thousand meters or a one mile loop in your neighborhood that's safe away from traffic and you're constantly running on that. So, so the the as a general rule, and it, it's not a hundred percent, but any cancel any wind help one direction will be somewhat canceled the other. Now, the research shows that it actually doesn't make up for it a hundred percent, but it's better than just running in one direction a time trial. And you should be doing a variety of time trials if you're not racing. You should go out and maybe ten miles is too far for you as a recreational runner. If I were you. I would just set up, you know, like a six, six or seven mile course, maybe a 10K course, as opposed to an elite runner. You know, they might do a 10 mile time trial or a 10 mile at, at, at just below 100% effort. I've, I've for many years always said, run it at 97%. Doesn't matter if you're doing a mile time trial, two mile time trial, 10 mile, run it at 97% because you can predict with fairly good accuracy what 100% would be without absolutely gutting yourself. And it's very difficult, very, very difficult to run 100% effort by yourself, right? So the, the, the anxiety is lowered also when you're thinking to yourself, I'm just going to do a 97% effort time trial, and then I'll estimate what 100% is. Mm -hmm.